everyone! <laughs> Welcome to my super duper online art classes. I want to take a little video to introduce them and also to show you through the process. So each week I am going to send you a reference photo. This week we're doing Larry the Lobster which will change each week but here he is. So I've sent you out a copy of the painting we're doing and I'm also going to send you out a little printout of a trace that you can do. So, if you imagine, <laughs> I'm going to send you this line drawing and then you print it out and then you can trace it over onto watercolour paper. And as if by magic, here is that trace. So, in each week, this is the sort of setup you want. So you've got your reference photo in front of you, you can put it on a monitor, you don't need to print it out. Then you've got your drawing ready. I've got some of my watercolour paints, a palette, some paintbrushes, it doesn't matter what they are, just two paintbrushes, one paintbrush, whatever you've got, some kitchen roll so you can dab your brush, clean water, cactus is optional, and then I've got my laptop set up, so that's where you'll have Zoom ready to go. And that is it, so you'll tune into the lesson online through Zoom, I'll give you some instructions on how to paint it, and then you can paint along at home. And that is the basic idea of online art classes. So hopefully you'll join me. Um, and if you've got any questions, just shout me an email at info at lauradennis.co.uk. See you later. So guys, here's our palette. Um, it's really just a mixture of yellows, greens and blues. So here are the colours that I've used, but don't worry too much about the ones you've got. As long as you've got a lemony yellow colour, a mixture of greens and then a light colour blue and a couple of uh, darker blues. That will be just fine. There's also a neutral tint or Payne's grey. That's a really good colour for darkening around the edges. So have that handy if you've got it. But again, use what you've got and don't worry too much. So let's begin. What you're going to need is a picture of the reference photo ready in front of you, just so you can keep referring back to it as you're painting along. You can do this, either print out the picture of the lobster or have it propped up on the monitor in front of you, just somewhere easy where you can glance up and down as you're painting along. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to wet the watercolour paper. And then we're going to drop in some of the lighter yellows and greens on top. So what I mean by that is with just clear water straight out of the jar and with a brush loaded with it, we're just going to pop down a water wash over all the areas that we want to put down the yellow colour. If you look at the reference photo, you see that. That's all on the claws. There's some going down the centre of the body of the um, lobster. Any area really where you want light pigment to go to. And what we're going to do, we're going to put down this colour wash first. So after the water's gone absorbed into the paper, we're going to plug in those yellows and those greens. So at this stage, we're laying the foundations. We want to put water everywhere that we want the yellow and the greens to go. And then we're going to stack dark colours over the top later. This will become clearer through the video. So here what I'm doing is just working my way down the body of the lobster with just a clear water wash. You can see the glean of it in the video a little bit. So I'll let that play. That's the first step, just getting the watercolour paper ready. Saturating it with water where you want the colour to be. And you can see that there, just tinting into the video. And what we're going to do, when that sheen has dropped, that's when we're going to lay in the colour. So by the sheen drop in, I mean when you apply the water initially, it'll be quite glossy. Once those fibres from the paper have absorbed all the water, it will slightly drop its gloss and the sheen will be less. And when the paper's done that, that means all these fibres have absorbed all the water and they'll be more, much more receptive to receiving the pigment. So you want to wait until that paper and the sheen has dropped a little bit before stacking in the colours that we're about to do in a second. So now we've got our watercolour paper wet, we're going to start to add in colour, but first we're going to make a really watery mix of some light green, that's a permanent green that I'm using, and a lemon yellow. So you can see me here, I'm just mixing up a really watery wash of the green, and then I'm going to pull down some of the yellow too. 
So you want this mix to be really light. Remember we're going to stack up to make a darker, more intense colour. This is just our base layer. You can see here in that freeze frame, that's how watery you want it. So it's a really weak wash to start with. And then what I'm going to do is load up my brush with a yellow mix first. And I'm just going to drop in the colour onto that wet watercolour paper. So any areas that I made wet before, I'm just blotting in some of the yellow colour. So I'm not using brush strokes here, it's much more loading of the brush in that really watery mix and then depositing it back down on the paper in a sort of tapping motion. And you're just going to go through the entire painting like this in any areas that you see yellow in the reference pick. And then we're going to also stack in some of the greens in the same in the same way. But don't worry about making this a neat painting at the moment. We're letting all these pigments bleed out and use that damp paper to bleed into a nice sort of watercolour effect. So just alternating, dropping in the yellows and the greens in choice areas. So up on the pincers and down the spine of the lobster's back. So here guys, you can see I've stacked in the yellow and now I've just loaded my brush with some of that permanent green and I'm just dropping in splodges of it on top of the yellow mix. Can you see that? So I'm relying on the fact that that yellow pigment is still wet. So when I'm dropping in these green splodges, it's creating a sort of texture and pattern in the, in the spine of the lobster and up on the claws too. So because the paper's still wet, it will actually bleed out nicely and it won't dry in a hard line and it will create a lovely little sort of shell effect. So I'm just working my way up, blobbing in some greens in a bit more of an intense colour. I remember watercolours dry lighter than they go on, so you can be more intense than you think you need to be here. And because it's wet, it will bleed out nicely. So that's the baseline of the body pretty much done. So once you're happy with the base uh, colours of the body, so that's just stacking in those light yellows and those light greens, we can start to now add some colour intensity. So I'm just pulling down some viridian green here. It's quite syrupy. Um, and then I'm loading up my brush and I'm just going to splodge in little bits of the viridian green in different places. And again, because the you can see the watercolour is still wet, so you can see the gloss of the yellow. And you want to do this while the pigments are all still damp from the first wash. So what you might notice now is that as your uh, paper is drying a little bit, that you're getting hard edges where that watercolour pigment is bleeding. And that can be a bit unsightly. So to correct that, what you want to do is clean off your brush and then dab it on some kitchen roll. And then just starting from the outside of the line, just wet the paper beyond it and then work towards that hard edge that's forming and just lift it off slightly and then dab the excess away. So it's a clean brush and we're just looking for any hard edges that are forming. I'm working away from the line and then working towards it. You just want to pick up and soften any of those hard edges forming. And because the paper will still be slightly damp, the pigment should lift off relatively easy. So just go around correcting the areas that you need to at this stage, softening out those lines where you need to. Stop those watermarks forming now and it will save time later trying to make corrections. So any lines that are starting to have to form hard, that's what you can start to do now. The secret though is to keep dabbing the excess pigment that you're removing off of your brush. And do that just by wiping it on the kitchen towel and rinse it lots. So I'm just going to crack on and get rid of all those hard edges that are starting to form with that technique and then I'll be ready for the next layer. So after you've made those corrections, what you want to do is just make the final adjustments on this first layer just by dropping in some more intense colours. So I'm just going in with a bit of a more syrupy mixture, dropping in some of the greens and the viridians just to add even more detail to those shell areas.
What you'll notice now, after you've added in those intense colours onto that light wash, you might see some of uh, some more watermarks forming. So we're just going to soften those edges up as we did in the last uh, section. So again, just rinse your brush off with some clean water and dampen it. And then with a really gentle spiraling mo movement, and you can see me there on the video doing it, you just want to go around really softly and just pick up any of those hard watermarks that might have formed from dropping in more intense pigment onto a lighter background wash. And what I do at this stage when I'm painting is I just go around any of these edges and I just um, bring them up and just sort of knock them back ready for my next layers. And it's really about just removing any unsightly watermarks and, sometimes, and, and also sometimes just leaving some in there to create that lovely texture. But you can see the technique there. So that's a clean brush and I'm just rotating and just pulling up the edge of the watercolour. What's important then is just to dab off the excess of that colour pigment that we pulled up onto a clean towel before you go on to your next area. You can see me doing it there. So guys, what we're going to do now is those antennae. What I'm first going to do is pop in a water wash. I'm going to go the entire area of the antennae with clear water just to damp the paper. And then I'm going to pre-mix here some viridian green and then the lemon yellow. And I'm going to first pop down a layer of the almost pure yellow colour over both sides. And then what I'm going to do is just over certain areas is drop in the viridian green colour. And then what I'm relying on here is that the fact that the colours will bleed together because I put that water wash down first. So what we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same technique for the legs. So just go around the entire um, outline of all of the legs on both sides and with the clear water wash. And then we're going to drop in some more intense colour. And we're going to use blues this time. So I'm using the cerulean blue, which is the lightest, and then a bit of compost blue too. And you'll see as the video plays on that I'm first creating that water wash and then I'm going to plug in that colour. So here's that cerulean blue and the compost blue and you can see how syrupy it is. It's not really uh, watery like we were using before in the first layer. We're actually building up colour intensity now. And I am just popping it along the edge of the legs just popping in that colour and what I'm going to aim to do is stack up and build up the colour on these legs but first get the base colour down so you want to start with your whatever lightest blue you have just pop it over the entire area of those legs and then we can build up with more detail so here I am going in with that detail what I've done is I've mixed up a really quite syrupy ultramarine blue and while the paper is still wet from that first light blue wash, I'm just going to pop in some more detail and you can see me there, I'm using this dark blue to create shade which in turn is creating sort of the form of the leg. So it's giving the impression that it's a spherical sort of cylindrical shape. So just go around the edge of the painting, use your reference photo here, look for where the shadowing is and just follow along adding in that darker blue to create that effect of form all the way around on those little lobster legs. So guys, once you've got that light colour in first and then you've built up the detail to the ultramarine, you then want to go in with a really dark colour. So I'm using an indigo on this next pass. Um, you can use a neutral grey or a Payne's grey or whatever dark colour you've got really. But this is going to be where you're building up that intense colour intensity. And I'm still here relying on the fact that the paper is still wet. And what that's doing is meaning that the colours are slightly bleeding. Um, to give it that lovely watercolour effect. So I'm just dropping in some really quite dark intense indigo just to really sort of outline those little legs, little lobstery legs. Going right around the edge and you can see that. So just crack on, keep, build up the detail now. This is where we want to create that lovely rich blue colour that, we're, uh, that the reference photo shows. So you just want to repeat this whole process and go around the first side of the legs and then the other. And then hopefully what you'll have is a beautiful set of lobster legs with a really intense uh, blue colour to it with some nice shading and nice sort of mottling effect where you've dropped in those colours one on top of another. 
So pause here, guys, just while you catch pace, and then we'll move on to the body and the heads and the claws. Exciting, hey? Okay, on to the final push. What I'm doing here, folks, is mixing almost in a pure indigo, which is a really intense blue. Um, and I'm just adding in those really fine details. So going around the outlines and making really intense um, shadows on the legs. And the paper is all but dry. I would say it was like damp to dry. So that means I'm getting more control. It's not bleeding out or going sort of willy-nilly everywhere. It's just there sit in and be able to control it a little bit more and this is good for fine detail and I'm using the very tip of my brush um, for control you might find it easier if you use a fine a fine line brush to do these really little details just do what's comfortable and build up all those lovely details right onto the body so what will have happened is we've put that light wash down and now it's going to be dry so we need to make the entire area area workable again so what you want to do is, with a wide flat brush, is you just want to go really gently and go over the entire area with a water wash. So you want to do this gently so that you're not disturbing the pigment underneath. And it's really good if you use the flat side of your brush rather than lots of strokes using the tip of your brush. And that's because you'll get more water dispersal over a larger area with less trauma to the paper. Right, so now I'm stacking in some compost blue and then a little bit of the darker shades, the cerulean and things like that. So you can see there, it's slightly bleeding out because that area is damp. And that's the effect you want. And if it goes on too thickly or it's a bit sort of staticky, static meddling my words, what you can do is place the colour on and then just rinse your brush off and go over it with some clear water just to soften out the edges again. But here the secret is to use the flat side of your brush rather than the pointed one. Uh, and that will help it not sort of create watermarks or kick up that first wash that we put down. And you can just pop in there the tendrils and any extra little details. And the same technique with the claws to slowly build up that colour intensity. So start with your lighter blues and then work up to your darker blues. And use the reference photo, go around, see where all those shadows are, and that's where you want to pop in that darker colour. If you're using the Payne's Grey or the Indigo, that's where you want to be putting the, that in now. But use the reference photo, see where the shadows are forming, that's where you want to pop this colour down. And build light to dark, so start light, building up to those lovely dark hues of the ultramarine blues and the Indigo. So I'll leave that play and I'll just twitter along as it, as it plays. So you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm putting down a really intense indigo colour and I'm outlining the sort of sections of that lobster shell. And then what I'm doing, I'm rinsing my brush off and with just a clear water, I'm just softening back out the edges. And that's because the dark will stack really heavily on that light colour and it can be a bit too much of a contrast. So a top tip, when you are painting a really dark colour like this over the top of a lighter one, you get in the dark colour first, rinse off that brush, and then just with some clear water, just go around the outside edges, and that will just slightly meet, soften, out, soften it out. And what's happening there is because you're putting clear water down, you're taking off the excess of the hard edge and also allowing that to bleed back out really softly. And it's just a way that you can stack these intense colours without creating too much of a jarring effect um, or making it seem a bit sort of static looking. So here I am, just keep on building up that colour. You'll notice what I do is put it down the really intense indigo and then I tend to soften it back out and then stack the colour back in. And it's just a process of repeating this really. So putting dark bits down, soften them back out, adding more detail again softening it back out and stacking it up until you get really intense colour colour forms. Um, I'm just waking up at the top here onto the side of that um, shell near the eyes. So I've popped down some indigo and then I'm just pulling out little bits of the colour that I popped down and adding detail. What I'm doing there is I'm tapping. I'm, so I'm basically pulling out the indigo that I just put down and with the tip of my finger I'm just tapping it down onto other areas of the painting. And that's just a way to give some um, texture into the shell there. And the reason that I'm doing it with uh, that tapping motion is that if you just sort of splodge down some circles, 
you might get a hard water line. Whereas if you use the edge of your fingertip or tap it down, it just sort of creates, uh, breaks that tension of the watercolour and means that it won't dry with a sort of hard watermarked edge on it. And slowly now, just building up all that lovely detail. Looking at my reference photo all the time just to see where those forms and shadows are going. So we're going to move on to that central line running down the lobster's body. What you want to do is do it in a medium dark colour and then build up to the colour intensity. So I've put it down there as a sort of ultramarine and then what I'm going to do is leave it just sort of dry out a little bit and then stack in that indigo in just some of the areas um, to create a darker line. And you can see me there just going through darkening up a little bit of the areas down that spine. And I popped in just two tiny little semicircles for those eyes. That's about it for the body at the moment, folks. So you can see, you just want to build up your colours. You've put down your light wash and built up some of those lovely blues. And I've got the eye formation in, and now I'm ready to move on to those front claws and just building up the detail of those antennae. Right, we're almost there. So we're going to start on those claws. Um, exactly the same technique as the body. So that first light wash that we did in those yellows and greens will be dry. So we want to make the area workable again by going over the areas that we want blue with just some clear water and letting it absorb in the paper a little bit. Once that is slightly absorbed, what you want to do is with a mid-range blue, so that's the cerulean and the com compost, a bit of ultramarine even, just start to build up the details. So first go in with the, the mid-range uh, blues and then build up to the indigo once you're happy with the shadow placement and the trick with the claws here is not to really overwork them you just need the hint of shape and form and then we're going to build up um, and create quite a hard dark indigo Payne's grey line around the edge of the claws to give it some form so it's really just about not going overkill and keeping it quite water in that sort of watercolour effect. So here I am going around that second claw. You notice clear water first, let that sink in. Follow the shape of the trace here as well. Um, if you look at the reference photo you'll see where the dark shadows are on the blue. That's where you want to be put in the water wash because that's going to give a place for the water pigment, the watercolour to disperse into. So I should add here, when I said about putting that clear water on the areas of the blue, just put the wash slightly beyond the blue area. And this is so that the entire area becomes a little bit more workable. If you just did it directly to the shadow, um, what would happen is the watercolour would all form and group towards the edges and make quite a hard line. Whereas if you go beyond the area that you want to be blue, and let that all sink in. When you place your blue pigment in, it will slightly bleed, creating a soft edge than it would if you just had pools of water in the direct areas of the shadow. This technique may take a little practice, but it's basically a sort of glazing technique. So you've let all those yellows and the green light wash dry, and then you're making the entire area work again by going over with a clear water wash. And it's sort of not huge pools of water, but it's more sort of dampening the paper, letting it absorb, and then at dropping in the blue pigment, and so that it disperses nicely and bleeds out slightly. So you can see here, what I'm doing is just building up those blue tones on the claws. I started again with the lighter mid-range blue, so the cerulean blue or compost blue, and that's gone on to damp paper that we put the water wash on and then what I'm doing is with a slightly more syrupy darker colour so and you could use ultramarine or an indigo or the Payne's grey and then building up definition so I'm going in with a really dark indigo there and I'm just going around the edge of that claw to give it a really sort of dark shape and more form so it's all about stacking in detail start light to dark and just build up and go along following your reference photo, looking for where those dark areas are. Putting bits in and then sort of tapping them out. If you're getting watermarks at this point, um, just rinse off your brush and go along any of those watercolour hard edges with some clear water. You can see I'm doing it here. So I've cleaned, rinsed off my brush, I've then dabbed away the excess and then I'm just going along any hard lines that are forming, scooping it off and then dabbing my brush to remove the excess pigment and repeating the process. 
So I'm remaking that area re reworkable. I'm taking um, hard lines of the form in and then with a clear, clear water just softening up the edges and always removing the excess pigment that I'm taking off the page and blossing it onto the kitchen towel. And this is a way to soften any edges that are forming quite hard because when you are stacking this very contrasted colour on the top, you'll find that you will get sort of hard edges going along. So you just need to keep an eye on them. Keep rinsing off your brush, going back in with the edge that you're working on, softening it back out and repeating the process. It's all about keeping that paper nice and damp and keeping those pigments bleeding together softly. So we're on to the final stages, woohoo! We're going to start finally with those antennae and we're going to make these quite an intense colour. So we've got the viridian, the viridian even, green and the yellow and that's sort of dried by now. And what I've done is gone back over the entire area with a clear water wash. I have let the claws dry. Um, this is important because if you were to do the antennae when those big claws were still wet, they would actually bleed out as you go over the wet area, so they'd merge together. So leave that bottom colour dry first on the claws and then do the antennae. So once you've got that clear water wash um, over the base colours of those antennae, what you want to do is mix up an ultramarine and then an indigo. And you're going to start first just by going as an outline right the way up those antennae. And I've sort of created a broken line here, so I'm just slightly putting little bits of outline and then slightly horizontally lines um, across where the antennae are. And because the paper is damp, these, these marks will bleed out slightly. So I'm basically leaving some of the under colours exposed, which is the greens and those lovely bright yellows, and then I'm making small marks um, along the antennae. If you check the reference photo, you can see the shape of these marks a lot more clearly than you can on the video at, the, at present. But what's important is that we've made that area workable, so with that clear wash, we've outlined the entire um, antennae. We've let that clear wash sink in a little bit, just so those pigments and the papers are a bit more ready to receive the darker blue colours and then with quite a syrupy mixture of the dark blues I'm going in I'm just creating an outline and making some marks and some horizontal lines to give those antennae detail and form and as this progresses once I've got those sort of mid colours down then I'm going to go in with an almost pure indigo colour you could go pure plains grey or pure ultramarine mix in with a little bit of black to make a really dark um, colour hue and then with that, I'm just going to go in and add the final few flourishes of detailing. Um, but again, as with everything, you want to work your way from light to dark. So build in those yellows and greens first, let that dry, then go in with a mid-tone of the ultramarine indigo sort of colour. And then as the final details, stack in a really dark indigo paints grey colour. And that will really make those antennae pop out and look... Um, Super cool. P dot S, I'm so sorry about my clicky microphone. It's sort of clicking all the way through. Um, hopefully I'll get a new one soon and it won't be so distracted. <laughs> In the meantime, let's crack on. So I've got the detail of the antennae going and those claws and so what I'm doing now in the final stages of this painting is I'm just adding a little bit of details here and there and I'm adjusting a um, little bit. So I'm just adding in some darker spot areas here onto that um, lobster's body just to like speckle out some detail. What you can do with this as well is um, grab a white chalk pen or a white or some Tipex, acrylic paint, even some white chalk will do. And you can go along and just pull out tiny little highlights. Um, 
to create that sort of sheeny shell look. And that's about it folks, that is your wonderful Larry the Lobster, so just keep on going, you're all doing wonderfully, 